It was good to have you with us this morning. Wherever you are, this is our online worship for BVP on this Sunday, the 7th of February. We always begin with prayers, so let's turn now to speak to God in our prayers. Let's pray. Lord God, high in the heavens, yet in the person of Jesus our Saviour, you kneel at our feet. So today, as we come together, wherever we are, let us sing our praises loudly. Let us pray quietly. Let us listen attentively. Let us act presently. Let our words praise you. Let our actions praise you. Living, loving, eternal God, we seek to draw near to you today. Searching God into every dark place, into every hard heart, into every narrow mind, into every shut mouth, into every closed eye. Come with healing light to open up and reveal to us not only who you are, but what your love might be in us, through us, or even despite us. Forgive us for choosing bleakness instead of blessedness. Forgive us for the things we said when silence would have been better. Forgive us for the times we did not speak up when the cry of justice should have been made. And so as forgiven people, we turn to the week ahead. As we now see more light in our days, may we see new life, new light, new beginning, and new hope in our own lives. May our faith be seen in those around us. May you, Lord, in your infinite mercy, shine healing light upon us all. And so, through our lives, May we display God's glory each day and night through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Psalm 1 to 6. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Amen. How joyous do you feel this morning? Does your enthusiasm overflow to such an extent that if we were with you, we'd all be able to see it? Or are you finding in this COVID pandemic driven world that things are just too much? that life's hard, that you feel as if you're walking around carrying a bag of problems with you all the time. We often might think the latter of these two things, and if that's the case, this morning's Psalm number 126 could be of great benefit to you. Remember, after the invasion of Israel, if you know this part of the Bible, and being held captive in Babylon, eventually the Hebrews were allowed to return home. At that time, the people dreamed. Their mouths were filled with laughter. Their tongues sang songs of great joy. The nations around them noted that the Lord had done great things for them. And this is where I want to look closely at the psalm. And it's worth doing because this psalm has helped me personally at times when I found life something of a struggle, when life wasn't that easy. We've all realised that life as a Christian isn't always brilliant. But, and here's the but, although life not be, might not always be great, we should stick to the knowledge that because the Lord has done great things for us, we are, and not we were, but we are filled with joy. And this is exactly what's being sung here. And there's a reason why. We've got to the point here where the people sing of the days that the Lord has brought them back to their own land and they were joyous and now things aren't so great but they proclaim in their singing that they're still praising God and being thankful for what God has done. And the reason for that is found in the central verse of this psalm that we've heard this morning which is we are filled with joy. We are filled with joy. You see, this little psalm finds the people looking both back the way and forwards as well. And they're doing this during a difficult time. After they had returned home to Jerusalem, they had the hardship of carving out a new life and rebuilding the city. It wasn't an easy task, it was one they found difficult. But they are filled with with joy. Let's take a moment to think about this. Things at this point aren't going well. Times are hard. The days of sunshine now seem far off. Yet the people are still praising God. They're glad of their faith and they call upon God to restore things. What they're doing is something that I've learned over the years when times are hard and it's this. Although it might be difficult to do so, we anchor our faith in the difficult times and we trust God. We anchor our faith in the difficult times and we trust God. We don't throw our faith away, we root ourselves in it and we learn to be content that the difficult times will pass. Remember these words we've read in these Psalms until this point these things too will pass. A prayer is made that just as things were better in the past, we trust that God will make them better in the future too. And so here, the people praise God and make a prayer that things will get better. And they don't just pray lightly, it's not just a little prayer that oh, maybe things will be a bit better than they are just now. Their prayer 
is that things will change dramatically. They say, restore our fortunes, Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. Now, what does that phrase mean? Well, the Negev desert is south of Israel, and the water courses are ditches cut into the soil. And for most of the year, the area is completely dry because of the heat of the sun. But when the rain comes, the desert becomes full of colour. And because the land is flat, when the water comes, it can change the look of the area drastically because the water flows powerfully and rapidly. So when the people are praying for their fortunes to be restored, they're not making a prayer that things will get a little better. It's a prayer that God will move suddenly and powerfully in their lives. There is no apathy about their prayer. There is confidence in that prayer. And there's another image. There's another picture of this land. But this time it's not the, the ditches and the water flowing. It's a picture of a farmer sowing seed in the ground. This time, the verse says, May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. May those who sow with tears reap with shouts of joy. Now, we all know that when we sow seed, you don't see the results instantly. You don't get to reap the benefits there and then. You plant the seeds and then you wait trusting that it will grow into something that can be harvested. And that's what's going on in this psalm. You plant the seed of faith, not when things are good, but right when things are looking grim. You plant, having faith, that God will still give you something to reap, even if right then it doesn't seem that way. And this is what I have remembered and has kept me going through hard times to keep trusting in these words. If we sow in tears, we will reap with songs of joy. And then the lines repeated, He that goes forth weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, bringing his sheaves with him. All suffering, all pain, all emptiness, all disappointment is seed. Sow it in God and he will finally bring a crop of joy from it. Now, Tim Keller, we've talked about Tim Keller other weeks. Tim Keller's written a lot about enduring pain and suffering on the Christian walk. And he points to Psalm 88. It's not one you might want to read when life's going well, but then that's why it's there. Because life is often not going that well. And Tim Keller says this, It is perhaps when we are still in unrelenting darkness that we have the greatest opportunity to defeat the forces of evil. In the darkness, we have a choice that is not really there in better times. Because it's in the darkness we can choose to serve God just because he is God. In the darkest moments, we feel we're getting absolutely nothing out of God, nothing out of our relationship with him. But what if then, when it doesn't seem to be paying you or benefiting you to be a Christian, to be worshipping, what if then you continue to obey, you continue to pray, and you continue to seek God as well as to continue the way you live and care for those round about you. If we do that, we're finally learning to love God for himself and not just for his benefits. And then when the darkness lifts or the darkness lessens, diminishes, we will find our dependence on other things beside God for our happiness is shrunk and we then have a new strength and contentment in God himself. So to conclude then, you can see from Psalm 126 that those who wrote it were familiar with this darkness that Tim Keller talks about. 
they recall the pain of Israel, the heat of the desert, the time held captive in Babylon. They knew how to sow in tears. And from this little psalm, we learn one simple lesson. When we're struggling and feeling things are bad, keep trusting in God, pray to him, and pray with the anticipation that you'll get through it. Plant those prayers in tears. And then when things resolve, you can sing with shouts of joy. You see, in living as a Christian, as Eugene Peterson puts it, laughter does not exclude weeping. Pain and hardship will come, but they can be unable to drive out the happiness, the assurance of love that you know when you know that the Holy Spirit is upon you and that Jesus walks with you. It's the assurance of love that within you, you know you're redeemed. Amen.
loving and living God, we rejoice that this is your world, created by your hand, sustained by your power, guided by your purpose. So now we bring it to you, seeking that you would hear our prayers. We pray today for our homes and the people we hold dear. Silently we name them to you. May they know peace and joy. We pray today for our land. Those who are governing us at this time, faced with such difficult decisions, where there is always cost. Lord, give them wise judgment. We pray for all whose work shapes and guides our daily living, in local politics, in education, in economics and business. May those whose work falls in these spheres know wisdom and courage. And we pray today for our world and its changing needs, for those caring for us all, when they're so drained and tired from this past year. Lord, we seek your blessing on them. Give them strength, health and healing. And so for our world, we would desire a planet where all could be nourished and generosity shown. We pray for shelter and compassion, for laughter and love. And lastly, we remember the life and the work of your church and every community of faith where love is put into practice. Through your Holy Spirit, be present, Lord, and move amongst us all. We ask these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.
been good to have you with us today. And now as we turn to the week ahead, may the grace, mercy and peace of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love now and evermore. Amen. Thank you.